Johnny Mac with a very, very busy edition of Daily Comedy News. The Grammys were last night. We'll also talk about Slapgate. We've heard from Tony Rock, from Bill Maher, Tom Segura. Oh, my God. Amy Schumer has commented. Let's start with the Grammys. I'm recording this part here after the first commercial break in the Grammys. It seems like it's going to be pretty calm. If somebody slaps somebody, I'll do a bonus episode midday on Monday. But it seems like it's going to be calm. Trevor Noah did a pretty tame monologue where he was just kind of setting the stage and introducing famous people in the audience. He was working at a very fast pace, not really letting his jokes breathe at all. The closest he came to addressing Slapgate was on his introduction to Olivia Rodrigo. He said, we're going to be dancing, we're going to be singing, we're going to be keeping people's names out of our mouths. That was about it. The Grammy for Best Comedy Album went to Louis C.K. for Sincerely Louis C.K., I guess Louis is no longer canceled. Congratulations, Louis C.K. on your Grammy. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of reaction to Louis winning the Grammys. Yahoo wrote, when reached by the rap for comment on the controversy surrounding the nominations, including the nomination of Louis C.K., Recording Academy CEO Harvey Mason Jr. said, We won't restrict the people who can submit their material for consideration. We won't look back at people's history. We won't look at their criminal record. We won't look at anything other than the legality within our rules of is this recording for the work eligible based on date and other criteria? If it is, they could submit for consideration. What we will control is our stages, our shows, our events, our red carpets. We'll take a look at anyone who's asking to be part of that, asking to be in attendance. We'll make our decisions at that point. But we're not going to be in the business of restricting people from submitting their work for our voters to decide on. Congratulations, Louis C.K. From late night, did you see Jimmy Fallon and Jimmy Kimmel did a little April Fool's joke? If you were watching The Tonight Show, your host was Jimmy Kimmel. No, I did not misspeak. And if you're watching Jimmy Kimmel Live, out came Jimmy Fallon. Fallon did The Kimmel Show from California. Kimmel was in New York hosting The Tonight Show. The studio audiences were not told in advance. The musical guest on both shows, The Red Hot Chili Peppers. If you want to see the clips, I've shared them on the subreddit Daily Comedy News and the Facebook group, Daily Comedy News Podcast group. Pretty funny stuff. I don't have the monologues yet as I record this on Sunday evening, but I'll share them on Tuesday's show. A couple jokes that I do have. Jimmy Fallon said, I'm worried my dad's going to call me tomorrow and be like, I'm watching The Tonight Show. You've never been funnier. Later on in the show, Jimmy Fallon brought out Jimmy Kimmel's longstanding fake nemesis, Matt Damon, Except it wasn't actually Matt Damon. It was Justin Timberlake dressed as Matt Damon, sporting a Boston Red Sox jersey and a hat, a cup of Dunkin' Donuts, and a blonde wig. Jimmy Fallon asked Timberlake as Damon, what are some of your favorite Boston spots? Timberlake said, take the tea to Harvard, Dunkin', Boston. Saturday Night Live was also pretty strong. At least the clips I've seen so far, I should not lie to you. I've not seen the entire episode yet, but I saw a lot of the clips related to Chris Rock. And Colin Jost had a joke that I absolutely loved. Joe said, I think it was a disgraceful act that sets a terrible precedent about having to defend your wife at awards shows. Think about it. (laughs) Also, intelligence officers are saying that Vladimir Putin is being misinformed by his advisors about how badly the Russian military is performing in Ukraine, which is kind of like Will Smith's agent saying, you crushed it at the Oscars. Michael Che, during his acceptance speech, Will Smith said, love will make you do crazy things. You know what else will make you do crazy things? Crazy. (laughs) But I understand where Will's coming from. You can't expect him to sit there and watch another man jump all over his wife without signing an NDA. Wow. As much as we've heard about Jada and Will's personal lives, you can't expect us to retain everything. It's like Kanye saying, don't act like y'all didn't know I had psoriasis. Che also pointed out that Chris Rock has been very public about his nonverbal learning disorder, which means it's hard for him to understand nonverbal signals, sort of like how when he saw an angry Will Smith charging toward him, instead of moving out of the way, he put both his hands behind his back, smiled and said, "Uh uh-oh. More from Che, U.S. officials are concerned that Vladimir Putin is keeping military units positioned near Kiev despite earlier promises to withdraw. Putin's failure to pull out has earned him the nickname Nick Cannon. There was also a fantastic sketch I saw online. Gerard Carmichael played a seat filler at the Oscars who happens to land a seat directly behind Will Smith, played by Chris Redd, just as Chris Rock is taking the stage. Smith is super friendly before, during, and after his violent outbursts. In the sketch, Will Smith was about to take a selfie with the seat filler, and then he says, excuse me, I'll be right back, and you go up and you hear a slap sound, and he comes back, he's like, all right, you want to take that selfie now? Very, very funny sketch. While speaking about Gerard Carmichael, I watched his special. It's pretty good. It's going to make my end of year list, but there's a lot to talk about at that one. But let's save that for Tuesday's podcast. Amy Schumer was on stage in Las Vegas on Saturday night. 
She said, I don't even know what to say about the Oscars. I have no jokes about it. All I can say is, I don't know if you saw this, but Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Did that cross your newsfeed? Prior to the altercation, she was feeling confident about how the show was going. She said, I was kind of like feeling myself. Ooh, somebody's monologue went well. And then all of a sudden, Will was making his way up and just, and then she made a slap motion. All I could say was really sad. It says so much about race, about toxic masculinity. It's just everything. It was just really upsetting. Tom Segura put on your seatbelt for this, and you might want to get rid of the kids. He was on the Pat McAfee show. He addressed Will Smith and said, F that cuck. Let me tell you this, man. The idea that you're entitled to ask thinks because your feelings are hurt, you get to assault one of the all-time greats. And then the cowards, the spineless cowards that are in Hollywood and comedy, we have a list of these effing guys. Anyone who did not stand up and say some S for Chris Rock, we're going to ruin your effing life. I just want you to know that. You need me to read that sentence again? We're going to ruin your effing life. I just want you to know that. Wow. Segura continued. It's a display of entitlement. It's a very powerful, very wealthy, influential star who just decided, yeah, I didn't like that. I'm going to smack you. Then he gets to sit down, collect his award, get a round of applause, enjoy his night. It's insane. It's like a gross exaggeration. You see it all the time. I mean, you see entitlement everywhere, and that was on full display for the world to see. I have effing zero respect for that B word, and I feel like more people need to come out and say it. It's unacceptable. Oh, you need more quote? Okay. Segura said, I'll bite your effing face off. I'll disembowel you in front of your family if you come on my stage. Okay. Meanwhile, on Tom Segura's Twitter, he said, The B word been bald. Jokes about it or her are fine. It was tame AF. You're super sensitive about it? Buy an effing wig, all caps. Segura added, Lots of sensitive folks in my mentions. I'd like to remind you to S my D, he said the words. It's a little sensitive too. Tony Rock was on stage talking about his brother Chris Rock being smacked by Will Smith during last week's Oscars. Tony said, if you think you're going to walk up on this stage, this ain't the MFing Oscars. And if you walk your ass up here, you ain't nominated for S, but these MFing hands. Are we going to pop the rest of the year every time you see me do a show? Pop. He threw his hands in the air saying, I didn't want to start the show like that. You can hit my MFing brother because your B word gave you a side eye. All right. I'm cleaning up the language a lot more than usual today. Everybody is using quite salty language. Bill Maher had to chime in on his show. What a busy Monday we're having here. Bill Morris said, I mean, alopecia, it's not leukemia, okay? Alopecia is when your hair falls out. There are worse things. If you're so lucky in life as to have that be your medical problem, just say, thank God. It's not life-threatening. It's part of, for most people, 80% of men, 50% of women. It's part of aging. Aging is, trust me, I know, it's the degradation of the flesh. It happens to all of us. And, you know, just put on an effing wig like everybody else at the Oscars if it bothers you so much. On Friday, the Washington Post wrote about this and said as vocal as many comedians were last Sunday, plenty didn't want to talk about it later. More than 20 comedians declined to comment to the Washington Post, were unavailable or did not return a request for comment through their reps. One comedian who has no problems being out is George Wallace. I've seen George on CNN and a couple places. He told the Washington Post he was upset by how Will Smith ruined the evening. He said he immediately called Chris Rock and left a voicemail to let him know I love him. He said he also loves Will Smith, but lost a lot of respect for him in that moment. Chris Rock will never forget being slapped in front of millions of people. He has the rest of his life to think about that. Every time Chris goes on stage, he's going to be wondering if someone will slap him. Gilbert Gottfried chimed in with the Washington Post and said, hopefully it's isolated. But the dangerous thing about it is if you see a big star do it, you think, well, if a big star can do it, I certainly can. And then it was followed up after he smacked him. He gets a standing ovation and the audience is cheering. So it further makes you think, oh, that's a good thing to do. From the Daily Mail, we found out a little more about those ejections at the Wilbur Theater at Chris Rock's first show on Wednesday night. The Daily Mail names Caleb Anthony Hurd, 25 years old, booted for taking issue with the venue's mask policy, leading to an altercation with theater security and ultimately Boston police. According to a police report, Hurd jumped out of his seat and began to scream after he refused to wear a mask and was asked to leave. The report continues, Caleb was also acting in an aggressive and volatile manner, continuously raising his arms up and down, puffing out his chest and pointing fingers as he threatened all parties trying to escort him out. Apparently, Will Smith is starting to see some career backlash now. The Guardian reports streaming giant Netflix has slowed development on its upcoming action thriller Fast and Loose that was supposed to start Will Smith. Netflix has not commented yet, and it's unclear if they'll seek a new star or they won't make it at all. Hey, if you want to check out a cool podcast, check out the best song ever this week. 
Once a week, music journalist Scott Frampton does a deep dive on one song and tells you why it's cool. This week's song is Powerhouse by the Raymond Scott Quintet. Frampton writes, from Bugs Bunny to Motown to Moog synthesizers, Raymond Scott was a 20th century music innovator who got his weirdo compositions into American living rooms. That podcast is called The Best Song Ever This Week, wherever you get your shows. On Saturday, Estelle Harris, you knew her for playing George Costanza's mother on Seinfeld. Estelle passed away at 93. Her son, Glenn Harris, said in a statement, it was with the greatest remorse and sadness to announce that Estelle Harris has passed on, leaving a hole in my heart too deep to describe her kindness, passion, sensitivity, humor, empathy, and love were particularly unrivaled, and she'll be terribly missed by all those who knew her. Before Slapgate happened, I was telling you about Portland's Funniest Five from William at Week. One of the funniest five in Portland is stand-up Riley McCarthy, who says there's a difference between having a dark setup and a dark punchline. As William at Week writes, in 2018, Riley McCarthy decided to use his stage time at Helium Comedy Club to joke about Nazi hierarchy, namely skinheads being required to attack an immigrant, Jew, person of color, or queer person in order to, quote, earn a pair of red shoelaces indicating their rank. Hang on, stay with him, they write. McCarthy said, these bigoted, homophobic a-holes are showing their pride in their lifestyle with a piece of colorful flair. I'm sorry, that's gay as s, my dude. Are you honestly going to try to appropriate pizzazz from the queer community? <laughs> He says, I find that whimsical stuff makes me laugh most silly stuff. I think people find that really rewarding as a viewer of a joke, setting up that kind of tension of something intense or evocative and seeing it kind of made human. He said one time he almost got into a fight with a red lace Nazi at Plaid Pantry. I should probably mention that this guy was five foot one. He was one of those mini bigots, biglets as I like to call them. When it comes to the content of his jokes, Mike Birbiglia's influence is most apparent. McCarthy also likes to tell a story, taking the audience along a singular drawn-out adventure over the course of a 10-minute set. In 2021, he was named runner-up at Portland's Funniest Person. And that is your comedy news for today. I can tell you already, I have Tuesday, like, well-packed. There'll be plenty to talk about tomorrow before I even type words like Pete Davidson or Will Smith or Chris Rock or Amy Schumer or Dave Chappelle or comedy or comedian into Google. I could already record tomorrow. Going to be plenty to do. If you are new, I do this seven days a week. Follow the show for free on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, wherever you get your shows. If you'd like the show's commercial free and with an early release, usually the afternoon before they are scheduled on the main feed, you can become a premium subscriber on Apple Podcasts for $5 a month. Or a different way to support the show is you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash daily comedy news and throw five bucks in the tip jar. I would appreciate that. Meet you back here tomorrow.